Hello, my name is Joe. I'm a real fan of Jean-Paul Riopelle. And today, I'd like to tell you about his life, his childhood, and even his teenage years. Jean-Paul Riopelle was born in Montreal on October 7, 1923. The Riopelle's home was on the Lorimier Avenue in a working class neighborhood, but they lived comfortably. Jean-Paul's mother, Anna received an inheritance from her parents, and his father, Leopold, was a successful businessman who built houses for a living. As a child, Jean-Paul was bright, mischievous, and more rowdy than bookish. At the time, school wasn't easy for left-handed students like Jean-Paul. They were forced to write with their right hand and punished if they refused to, to do so. Nothing that Jean-Paul couldn't handle busy as he was, making friends and dreaming big. He saw himself as an engineer, a car mechanic, or a professional hockey player. Jean-Paul had a happy childhood until his younger brother Pierre suddenly died at age four. The tragedy had a heavy impact on seven-year-old Jean-Paul, who would remain an only child, quite an unusual situation at the time. And so, life went on. Jean-Paul would go fishing with his father and enjoyed woodworking with him. His father was also a skilled illustrator and Jean-Paul loved watching him draw. His father would even add details to an apple that Jean-Paul had drawn or draw directly in his son's school notebook. The Riopelle were largely spared the economic hardships that defined the 1930s. In 1936, Jean-Paul began attending school in Saint Louis de Gonzague where he met Henri Bisson, an art teacher who would give him private drawing classes on the weekends. The stern artist and his pupil would reproduce what they observed around them, focusing on still life paintings. When it was nice out, they would go to the park and paint landscapes. Jean-Paul held Monsieur Bisson in high regard and developed his techniques by his side. As a teenager, Jean-Paul got involved in scouting. He loved going on camping expeditions in the Laurentians, and his character was quickly noticed by the scout leader. Writing about Jean-Paul, the scout leader noted that his mind is wild and intentional. He has a passionate love for scouting and nature. He truly earned his nickname, Toro la Liberté, Bull of Freedom. In 1938, Jean-Paul and his father attended a conference given by Archibald Delaney, known by the moniker Grey Owl. A passionate defender of nature and animals, he even domesticated beavers, Grey Owl took on an indigenous identity and toured internationally to advocate for the protection of the natural world. Needless to say, he was a fascinating character who inspired the young and fertile mind of Jean-Paul. In 1939, Europe went to war, and Jean-Paul continued to paint. In 1941, he finished Ibu Premier, First Owl, and in 1942, he focused on painting landscapes and registered at Polytechnic. He still wanted to be an engineer, but growing bored of his studies, he eventually left the university. It was 1943, and Jean-Paul was 20 years old. He had friends, he went to the movies and skied. That same year, he registered to the École du Meuble, where he met Paul-Émile Bordua, a painter who dreamed of revolutionizing art. Surrounded by young artists, Bordua critiqued academic painting, including the type of painting that Jean-Paul had learned with Monsieur Bisson. This proved a tough pill to swallow for the young Jean-Paul. In 1944, Jean-Paul and his girlfriend, Françoise, went to a Dutch exhibit in Montreal where he experienced the world of Van Gogh as a revelation. He was inspired to break away from still life and landscapes and infuse his work with his own free and adventurous spirit. His desire to paint freely linked him with the young artist gravitating around Bordua. Together, they read the Surrealists. European poets focused on creating freely, spontaneously, and without constraints. There was just one issue. With Duplessis as premier of Quebec, there was no place here for young revolutionaries. 
Jean-Paul wasn't one to wither away in a province that didn't want its art. In 1946, he married Françoise, and the couple moved to Paris the following year. The war had ended, excitement was palpable, and Jean-Paul discovered the land of freedom that he had been dreaming of. The real pair returned to Quebec briefly in 1948 for the birth of their daughter, Isut, and the publication of Refus Global, a text that Bordua spearheaded and that 16 artists signed proclaiming their revolt and their desire for freedom. Near the end of 1948, the family returned to France, and their youngest daughter, Sylvie, was born later that year. In the 1950s, Jean-Paul visited museums, met artists from around the world, and threw himself into painting. He created his large mosaics, immense oil painting, which he created using a painting knife that brought him to fame. Art merchants bought his paintings and showed them in London, New York, and Berlin. Just like that, the young French-Canadian from Montreal's the Lorimier Avenue became one of the most famous painters in the world. His life in Europe was bustling with motorcycle trips and thick car collecting and sailing. But above all, he painted. Jean-Paul lived in France for 40 years. In early 1990, Jean-Paul settled back in Quebec, where his pieces drew inspiration from the province's natural environment. He first lived in the Laurentians and then in Lillouzois in the St. Laurent's River. Here, he painted his final piece, L'Hommage à Rosa Luxembourg. He died in the village of Saint Antoine de Lillougru, land of the snow geese, on March 12, 2002.